Greetings, every people! This is your Cult of Personality, your Toon Critic's name, Toon's name of my game. Welcome back to the Sketchpad, a little place where I do the interviews of whether they are voice actors, people from the show, etc., etc. I have quite an interesting guest here today. I've decided to step a little bit out of the um, realm of what I usually do. Today, I have with me Mike Pollock. Wow, what are the odds? What am I doing here? Hi. <laughs> Firstly, sir, thank you so much for coming on to the show. This is a huge honor. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. For those that don't know who you are, why don't you uh, quickly uh, introduce yourself? Sure. The short answer is I'm the voice of Dr. Eggman in Sonic the Hedgehog for the last 13 years. But among other things, you may have uh, heard me on Saturday morning TV as Meat in Ultimate Muscle and uh, the Mayor and Samo the Bartender in Kirby Right Back at You. Uh, Langston Lickitoad in Viva Pinata, uh, Bonaparte in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, uh, Big O Riki and Go Go Riki, and all the other assorted cartoons on the Fox Box and Four Kids TV, and the CW Four Kids, various names for it. Um, I do all sorts of commercials. You may have heard me recently doing uh, commercials for Hooters and for Scott's Lawn Care and uh, any manner of things. Whoever, whoever will have me, I'll do spots for them. And uh, some foreign films and all sorts of stuff. I read aloud without sounding like I am, and that's that's my skill. <laughs> so I was going to ask uh, a lot of the usual questions, but you, but on your website, you already have all those questions answered. So I'm going to go with uh, some ones that don't normally get answered. So that's starting off with, uh, what do you believe are some of the challenges any young voice actor slash uh, actress face when they first start out? The biggest challenge in acting is, has been, and will always be rejection. Uh, I am a freelancer, as most actors are, and especially voice actors, the work tends to be very short term. Uh, even if you're doing a series, a series may only take a couple hours a week, or in the case of Sonic Boom, four hours every two weeks. And so the rest of the time, you don't want to sit around doing nothing, so you keep auditioning, you keep looking for work. And with most actors, the ratio of auditions to booked work is pretty uh, sad. It's it's obviously not hopeless because I keep doing it, but my hard drive is littered with auditions, tons of auditions that I thought were really good, but apparently the people looking for the talent didn't agree. So get used to having rejection and, and being rejected. Beyond that, if you want to get hired, you want to make sure you have some acting background. So learn some stage acting. Even if it seems like it's not really relevant, it is. Especially since if you're going to be dubbing stuff, you may find yourself in a room all by yourself with just an engineer and producer or director on the other side of the glass. And you've got no one to act against except possibly pre-recorded people. You'll be hearing the lines played back from when they were recorded earlier. Or there is no one and you've got to act and react to people who haven't been recorded yet. So learn to act with people so you can eventually figure out how to do it without people. I can imagine that can be a little difficult, though. It's an acquired skill, and I've gotten apparently good enough at it that people like to have me come in and do it again. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Once you get the hang of it, it's like, okay, I get this. You're essentially playing voices in your head, and it's like some type of bizarre illness, but it's still a useful skill. Hmm. So what was the point in your voice acting career that you realized that, you know, you made it finally? What was that uh, moment like? Probably the first recurring role on a TV show, which in my case was the mayor and on uh, Kirby Right Back At Ya. And when I got to turn on the TV and, and, and hear myself coming out of an animated character over and over again on TV, that was really cool. Um, then I guess the follow-up to that would be having booked Dr. Eggman the first time around. And then in 2010, they recast everybody, asked me to re-audition, and they rehired me. And that made me feel really good. Well, you are, uh, in my mind, Egg, Eggman. As I've said, I made a video recently talking about my hopes for Sonic the Hedgehog in the movie. And I told myself, and in the video, that you were, like, born to play Eggman, I think. Like, there should be no one else that should do it besides you. Thank you very much. So... Do you enjoy interacting with the fans? Referring specifically to, I think you did a Twitter Q and A session, you know, where people asked, like you and Roger Craig Smith, like in character, a lot of things. What was that like, sort of um, interacting with the fans? Sure, uh, on the whole, fan interaction is fun. 
there's a difference between the personal and professional interaction. Most of the interaction I do on social media, people with questions or comments, and I'll just fire back just as me, Mike the actor, responding as an actor would. The Twitter takeover thing, the couple times we did it, that was short-term scripted, I guess would be a good way to, to say it. They started with an outline of the um, storyline of Dr. Eggman taking over Sonic's Twitter feed and how that would go down. But the actual responses were in pretty near real time. We'd be watching the Twitter feed and saying, hey, that's a good question. Let's deal with that. Or, hey, that guy's very active on Twitter. Let's talk to him. Or, hey, that'd be funny. Let's do that. And then the creative team would sit around, bang something out script-wise real quick, and we would perform it as a very, very fast turnaround uh, uh, performance piece. So that was really fun. It was a different atmosphere than just a standard, oh, this has been scripted two days ago, it's ready to go, have us stand there at the microphone and read. This was kind of frenetic and fast-paced and fun, and unlike most things that I would do normally. I have to say, like, I think probably my favorite bit from that was when uh, you guys respond to the Game Grumps, actually. What was that like? The Game Grumps are always, uh, always great to watch on Twitter, so they were excellent fodder for some interaction. <laughs> so it was uh, nice to be able to play along. A couple of the things we had to do, I had to be briefed because I wasn't the game expert that the guys behind the uh, scenes were. But we, again, <laughs> these smoke and mirrors and conjuring that are so much a, uh, a a hallmark of this profession worked out quite nicely. Yeah, it definitely was great. So bouncing off of the whole fan interaction thing, what has been a fun convention fan experience for you? A uh, couple of years ago at the London Anime Gaming Convention, uh, a gentleman came up with a life-sized uh, Dr. Eggman uh, coat uh, from the Sonic X era, or the mm. I guess the modern Eggman look, and he wanted me to try it on, and who, would, uh, who am I to say no? Been on the small side for me, <laughs> that was fine, but I... Uh, I willingly threw it on uh we had a uh, a life-size uh, sculpture of orbot that uh, that we also had made and i got a very nice photo op of me sort of fitting into the eggman jacket uh posing with orbot that was really cool so what is something you would like to do um as dr eggman that you haven't been able to yet well there's that movie that's uh in the works love to be part of that completely out of my hands but Presumably, if they'll have me, love to have him. Uh, and presumably, they'd have me as Dr. Eggman in that. But again, bad luck to speculate. So I already said too much. <laughs> and I already know too little. That was actually one of the future questions I was going to ask. Like, What are your hopes and thoughts for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie coming out in 2018? Whether or not I'm involved, I wish them the best. Uh, it's the, Sega's a fine, wonderful client. And it's up to them whether they use me or not in anything. It's lovely that they've used me up until this point and for whatever future stuff they may have but i understand that if if it's not in the cards to have me in the uh, mythical film that's fine but i i wish them the best of luck whether i'm there or not may i ask a, a quick bonus question sure so you've been eggman for so long starting with like the um i believe the video games and sonic x and mm -hmm. sonic boom so what has it been like, I guess, in Sonic X versus Sonic Boom? Do you feel there's a difference in the way the character is written or th different things that you do in, like, the series? Yeah, there was a different vibe in Sonic X, A, because it was a dub. So it was not the wacky ensemble fun that we tend to have on Sonic Boom. But it was a standard dub where everyone would come in separately and record um, because you have to match the lip flap of each line, and it takes so much tweaking after every line is recorded that it's a waste of time to have everyone there all the other actors watching one guy have his lines recorded and fixed so they schedule very much like a doctor's office you're here at one you're here at two you're here at three we file in sometimes meeting each other or not there were some cast members i didn't meet for months uh after the static x started it's like oh you're jason griffith hi how are you <laughs> uh, and that was fun and then the just the nature of the way the four kids uh, writing staff tended to write a little oh hokey might be the word 
Uh, some people would complain that it was too kid-oriented, but again, that, that was the nature of the channel. And then when Sonic Boom came along, um, and especially from the 2010 recasting with Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations, it's taken a much more comedic turn and comedic in a more cerebral type of way. I would liken it to the old Looney Tunes cartoons. It's got a very intelligent streak going through it. and it's Self-aware, I think, too. That would be, yeah. And it's great fun to record just because it's funny dialogue and it makes me laugh as I'm recording, causing numerous retakes. Sorry, guys. In the booth. <laughs> um, and also, we do it ensemble style. It's a weird type of ensemble style because most of the time I'm in New York and the rest of the gang is in L.A., so we're essentially chatting just like this on Skype where I'll hear them and we get to react and interact and act with each other through Skype and then my recording is shipped out to LA electronically and assembled for the final draft. Right. I thought it would have been more like, you know, you have like three guys in a room and then there's a chair with a laptop with the mic like pressed right up against it. That's how it would work or something. It's kind of a little more sophisticated than that. But well, it's I would essentially hope. Yeah, it's listed it's essentially listening on a phone. And I'll record my side, you record your side, then we'll put it together when we're done. All right. So what's one thing on your voice acting bucket list you'd like to share with uh, the lovely people who are listening to this? Well, as I'm constantly auditioning, my job is always to book the next job, whatever it may be. So today I did a bunch of auditions for assorted commercials. I would like to book each one. Chances are I'll book none of them, but that's okay. But I'm always focused on the next gig, whatever it may happen to be. Um, but I guess if I had to dream big, something big and theatrical, not necessarily the aforementioned Sonic the Hedgehog film. A Disney but... movie, perhaps? Any movie they would have me. Disney Disney would be a wonderful thing. Any of the big animated films that I go to the theater and see and say, hey, that could have been me. I could have <laughs> done that better. So, yeah, hey, Hollywood, whenever you're ready, give me a call. I'm sure they would love to have you. Thank you. All right. Uh, here we go. What makes you continue to do what you do as a voice actor? I guess this is the last question to kind of uh, wrap things up. It's a mixed bag. There's A, the need for food, clothing, and shelter, which, despite my best efforts, continues to not be free. So you've got to do something for a living. I happen to find this little gig, which I seem to be good at and people like to hire me for. But it's the, the joy of booking a gig and trying getting to do something new every time I'm in front of a microphone. It may be a recurring show, but... The scenes are always different. The dialogue is always different. The character is always slightly different. There's always something new to find and explore. And then there's the challenge of taking boring narration material for, say, a financial e-learning thing and trying to make it interesting, not just for the person hearing it, but also for me, who's got to sit there and read it for a couple hours straight. Um, or coming in and, and having booked a commercial and figuring out exactly what the director wants, because I generally can't leave until the uh, client is satisfied so figuring out well here's your script i think i know what you want is it this is it this is it th this and i keep keep trying to do it until i get it right so it's the challenge of being able to act i'm it, it's very much like a short order cook but with acting Oh, yes. I Okay, I kind of derped there. There was actually one last question. This is the last bonus question I wanted to throw at you. So, are you, like, familiar with My Little Pony Friendship is Magic? Uh, I have a 10-year-old daughter. Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm sure you know that they, they love to have um, guest stars, but say they offered you a voice role for the show. Would you possibly be interested? I rarely turn down work. A, because it's fun, and B, because my, my job is to keep working. My schedule abhors a vacuum, so absolutely. All right. But they call, and my, my various representatives can come to an equitable arrangement for compensation. Then yes, <laughs> I would. So we've come to the end of this interview. I want to say, Mike, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. Sure. Thanks for having me. Thanks for, thanks for listening, everyone. If people would like to uh, follow you or anything, uh, where should they go? What should they do? I would start with the website. It's a mic.com. That is I T S A M I K E dot com. Also, social media Facebook at It's a Mic, Twitter at It's a Mic, and occasionally Google Plus if I remember it. But you're not, you're not missing anything. Yeah, who remembers <laughs> Google Plus? <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a YouTube channel for It's a Mic. It's got playlists with some of my work on it. Uh, and I have a SoundCloud with 
some radio spots and some song parodies that I dabble in occasionally. All sorts of interesting stuff. All right. So with that being said, uh, I am the Tune Critic. Thank you all for watching. I'm keeping you totally tuned for your entertainment. Once again, thank you, Mike, for coming out. And go ahead and put down in the comments below uh, what your favorite Eggman uh, quote of the day is. Because I know Mike's got like a ton of Eggman stuff. So go ahead and put down in the comments what your favorite Eggman line is. Perfect. I, I've got a hunch what, what I think will be in the lead, but I won't spoil it. <laughs> I'm sure many of them are meme-worthy. So mm -hmm. thank you all for watching, and stay awesome. See ya!